Welcome back to Inquire Rochelle. We're here today filming in the Trini Breakfast Shed, which is a restaurant, a staple here in the community located at 3209 Church Avenue in beautiful Brooklyn on a beautiful day. Our next guest, Ms. Vivian Colon, has been a therapist for over 15 years. She has worked with adults to adolescents from all walks of life. Vivian has a background in child welfare, forensic social work, psychotherapy, grief bereavement, and more. Please welcome Ms. Vivian Colon to the show. Hola, muchas gracias. Th thank you for being here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing okay. Now, I touched a little bit on your background, but I feel like you could explain it so much better. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, I've been, just like every other social worker, you need some training when you leave school. Yes. Right? And so I started in child welfare. And I swore that I was not going to be a therapist when I left I was like, I'm going to be one of these grassroots social worker because social work started in community organizing and I was going to stay true to my roots. So 17 years later, I'm an LCSW and I'm a clinician and I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. But Congratulations. It, thank you. But it took me a long time to say, this is what I want to do. Okay. Now... I've checked out your website. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love it. You have a lot of detailed information on there. You have a lot of certifications. So you cover a wide variety of ranges that include Reiki body work. Reiki. Co yep. Cognitive behavioral therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, clinical anxiety treatment. Now, of all, you have much more than that, but of all of those things you're certified in, what do you focus on or what's your most favorite thing to practice? So my most favorite thing to practice is acceptance and commitment therapy. And then and what exactly is acceptance and commitment therapy? That's a great question. So I've been in, in healthcare for a really long time in a treatment modality mm -hmm. in the short term. So okay. managed care drives our health. Mm -hmm. right? and our treatment plans. So CBT became a thing, right? Oh, you could get really better with 24 sessions and cognitive behavioral therapy, and it was the it um, therapy of the moment. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the type of therapy that addresses the thought, the feeling, and your actions, right? So it's, there's something called the cognitive triangle. And the premise of CBT is saying, that thought is bad. You shouldn't think that you're a failure. You're a really, you're not a failure. Uh -huh. But our brains start thinking, oh, let me find all this evidence to see why I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. So that was a CBT trained therapist. And I was like, it's going to be all about CBT for me. Yeah. But then I learned about acceptance and commitment therapy act. And what acceptance and commitment therapy, which I'm pretty excited about because basically is on the premise of values. We all have irrational thoughts and irrational beliefs sometimes. Acceptance and commitment therapy is, can I live with this thought? Mm -hmm. Can I live with this really bad thought? And how do I have, and the thought is not going to, is always going to be there, right? Okay. And, and it could be whether it's some guilt or it's some shame, right? Mm -hmm. And how do I still have a meaningful life even though that thought exists? How do I persevere? How do I keep on going? Imagine you being in quicksand, right? And what happens in quicksand? What you happens sink. in quicksand? You sink. sink. Slowly, and what do you try slowly. to do? You sink slowly and you try to dig yourself out or push yourself out, and that's the worst thing I think you could do in quicksand because then you just kind of sink faster, right? And die, right? Yeah. So acceptance commitment <laughs> therapy is saying, well, how do I go through this quicksand mm -hmm. And how do I think about it in a slower motion? Oh, okay. And how do I get myself out of it? Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to manage the quicksands. I'm going to live with this problem. But I'm then going to eventually get out. Right? You kind of have to see the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. Like you're, you ha you're in a bad situation and you don't see a way out. But there is a way out. It's just going to be a slow process. And you're going to feel like you're sinking. I'm trying to just understand... Okay. It means oh, that's that you what have, you're saying. You, yeah. you have to turn off that struggle switch. Okay. Right? Okay. It's because sometimes when we are involved in a problem, what happens, especially if we have anxiety, it's part of acceptance and commitment therapy as well. It's what happens. Oh, I'm, I'm, I have anxiety, and I have anxiety about having anxiety, and oh, my God, <laughs> you know, this little thing now has become this Ten mountain, times greater. Right? And it's yeah. a, 
And so then you turn on the struggle switch, right? And the struggle just produces more struggle, produces more struggle. When you and get into your head and now you're thinking about it too much and it got a hundred times worse than the little itty bitty thing that it started out as. Yeah. It might not be that little, but it's saying, how is this mm-hmm. problem still going to persist in my life? And how do I learn to live with it instead of cognitive behavior therapy? Yeah. Let me change the thought. Acceptance and commitment therapy. How can I live with this and still have a meaningful life? Wow. That is very powerful. That's a different way of thinking for sure. Yeah. I like it's it. Completely different. Completely type of different. Do you use this type of therapy with your um, current patients or clients, sorry, that you see? Yeah, I okay. do. I do. Um, I always tell them, right? I mean, really, when you come into a therapy session, it's pretty um, intimidating, right? To mm-hmm. sit in front of someone and someone doesn't necessarily have the answers for you, right? I'm there to guide you. You inside know what you want, right? right? I'm there, one, to make sure that you're safe, to give you some coping skills that you may not have had, but you're the subject expert in your life and your struggle and yeah. your feelings. I'm there to hold it for a little bit and say, these parts we can probably pack away. You don't need to bring that back, right? You could take that out of your luggage for now, right? right? And then you go back. When you leave, you still have a backpack, but I'm hoping that it's a little bit lighter. It's lighter, yeah. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit in talking about your specific practice so we could talk a little bit about your specific practice, which is called the Trek Within Counseling. Yeah. How did that come about? So Trek Within came about, I'm a hiker. Right? Ah, another hiker. <laughs> Everyone loves lot. hiking these days. You know, I wonder if there's a research before and after the pandemic, how many of us became hikers. A because, lot. Yeah. because we all had to be outdoors. Um, so I am a hiker and um, a lot of like, you know, hiking is trekking. Yeah. Um, um, I love uh, nature therapy. It's something that you don't necessarily see here on the East Coast, but I yeah. go to Utah a lot. And a lot in Utah, uh, you have like forest therapy prescriptions. Forest therapy? No, right? And like, what exactly is for? Like you go into a forest? Is that is that what we're talking about here, yeah, or how actually, how does that therapy work? <laughs> right. Well, actually, there's something called forest therapy or forest bathing. It's something else, but um, <laughs> but um, you use nature as a way of healing, right? Okay. So a lot mm. of times, and again, it's taking this traditional form of therapy of saying you have to sit in front of like somebody's office and somebody's taking notes yeah. and you're laying down. Right, that might be really uncomfortable for somebody who's claustrophobic mm-hmm. or someone who's really doesn't feel comfortable in other spaces. But it, uh, if you go outside and walk and talk, yeah. right, and you can find whether that's a small trail, whether it's a two mile trail, a one mile trail, mm-hmm. it's part of incorporating that. Okay, and trek within okay. is because the actual trek walking and within it's we try to do every day right it's like we're just navigating trying to figure out ourselves our and ourselves. see how things are mm-hmm. yeah so that's how you pretty much came up with the yeah. idea it's during the right. pandemic and hiking and moving around a lot um during the pandemic i was furloughed so four people ah. in my family were furloughed. oh wow yeah wow. During, like one uh, month after another and i was mm-hmm. toyed about the idea of uh, having a private practice right um and I thought that I needed to be like this clinician that had all these certifications yeah. to be like this 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 cl- this private practice uh, practitioner. And I, you know, you have a lot of imposter syndrome. It's like whether, you know, can I do this? Who are going to be my clients? Yes. Do you? Who, how much are you going to charge? Are you going to charge a hundred dollars per session? I mean, I go to a therapist. I pay him 150 per session yeah. i'm like how do you get this clientele like what is, you know who am i marketing towards mm-hmm. and i think just in 2020 having that time where i wasn't employed for some time yeah i just said i'm gonna start my own so that's how it came about okay plus the love of hiking i always knew i wanted something that had trek within in it so i thought this i was thought like that was a very clever time. name i love Thanks. the name Trek Within. Very, very clever. Thanks. Now, we were discussing before we even started filming about this trek that you went on that kind of had a major impact on your life. Can you tell us a little bit about, is it El Camino? 
Oh, about El Camino. Woohoo, I got it right. Tell us a little more about that. Um, thanks. So it's called El Camino de Santiago. And El Camino de Santiago is a long walk, basically. It starts up in St. John Pierre de Port, and it goes all the way to Santiago de Compostela, which is a big church. Mm -hmm. or, or if you want to keep on going, it's to the end of the world, which is Finisterre. Um, How long? How many miles is that? About 500 miles, I believe. Right? And you did a 500-mile yeah. walk? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Right? Um, wow. And so you basically what you do, you walk every day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of so the Camino de Santiago, its roots are in Catholicism. So really long time ago, you know, when people wanted to, you know, Catholics and guilt. Right. And so if you wanted to ask for penance, you would go on this really long walk. And sometimes people died during the walk and like it would take two years. Right. So now it doesn't take that long. It takes maybe about four or five weeks, depending on how you plan your trip. You will be walking for six or seven uh, hours a day. Wow. And a lot of people go for different reasons. It could be like something happened in your life. You need answers for something. Mm -hmm. um, some I've met people on the Camino who were literally uh, uh, sharing or, or, or their loved ones ashes. They were leaving their loved ones ashes because they asked to, you know, to leave them on the Camino. There were people who um, who were just finding answers because they were going through a divorce or, a, you know. So it's a really long. Uh, walk, but it's a really long meditation practice. Actually, you know, we have this thing about mindfulness now, and if you really want to be mindful, try doing a Camino. I mean, you have nothing to do but walk in yeah. your thoughts. And so let a lot it. of baggage go. But then, can I ask you a personal question? Why yes. did you decide to do uh, the El Camino walk? So I've always wanted to do the Camino walk ever since, like, I don't know, I heard about it like when I was like 21, 22. And then I saw this movie called uh, the the way, I think it's Martin Sheen that's in it. The way, um, okay. everybody should see this movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and um, personally, at that time, I heard that people were asking for a lot of um, people who walked the Camino were also asking for miracles. So at that time, I was in a situation where I wanted this miracle to happen. Mm -hmm. I wanted I was going through fertility treatment. I wanted to have a child. And so um, so that's why I walked. I don't have a child now, but it doesn't it didn't impact how powerful that experience was because um, there's something called trail magic or Camino magic. Okay. And um, there's something that says the Camino will provide. So I think everything that I needed during that time, mm -hmm. including separating from the person that I was with about 10 years came as a result of that Camino. Oh, wow. So it had a really powerful impact on you and their life and what you were going through at that time. It's beautiful. There's nothing like it. I mean, I don't wouldn't say 500 miles, but for people now, would you just say walking is a form, is a form of therapy? It is. It's a form of therapy. But imagine how liberating it is. Every day we wake up, we have to like feed the kids or feed your parents, you know, Lock the door, go to work, commute to work, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine a life where 40 days, the only agenda that you have is to wake up. Wow. And go um, for a walk. Right. And then everything that you live on, on the Camino is in your backpack. So your backpack shouldn't be 10% of your body weight. So you have two chains of clothes, two underwears, maybe one pair of shoes, Maybe basic toiletries. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you come back, if you do not become the most minimalist person ever, <laughs> right? Because you realize you're, I have you don't too have that many much clothes. on that trail. I don't have <laughs> survived in two pants the whole for forty days. I don't need anything else, right? Wow. And so, yeah. All right. Maybe that's part of like you know why I did this long trek. It was a trek with them, but yeah. All, all the pictures on my website are from the Camino. And the pictures are beautiful, so you guys should definitely check them out. I know you're more into the natural stuff. Can you explain that a little bit more to me? Natural modalities in terms of COVID, a lot of people were drinking ginger tea and onion tea and this, that, and the next thing. And is that part of what you're talking about in terms of natural modalities? And how, how would you explain it better? I was actually just having this conversation. Um, 
So I think in terms of like natural treatment, natural like modality is yeah. the specific type of therapy. Um, there are two things that I, I notice, right? Um, one is the space for people to be together mm -hmm. and energy around us being transmitted. Right. Um, I, 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 I don't believe there are coincidences in, in life. So I came back to a place to work right now that maybe 20 years ago I learned something about healing circles. Mm -hmm. um, and now healing circles is all part of this restorative work and, you know, fancy framework, right? But um, healing circles are natural to our people. And so what people did is um, you would have this close space of women who were, had some deep, deep wounds and trauma, uh -huh. and you would do these ground rules for your healing circle. Your healing circle might be five or six hours. I happen to go to my first healing circle two hours from where I currently work 20 years ago. Just a button, I'm so sorry. Yeah. What exactly is a healing circle? Is it a group of people? Is it an actual? Uh, it's, um, it's like a, well, I went with women. I'm pretty sure that you have it with men. Mm -hmm. And so um, you go in and you go in with something that's really heavy in your heart. Um, and the purpose is, is to cry through it, to intentionally cry and suffer through that. And through that experience, be reborn. Okay. Now, That's interesting. The fancy term for it now is called restorative circles. It has a different connotation now in school systems mm -hmm. and a lot of other different spaces, but it comes from the whole, from our ancestors. Healing circles where we technically have a trust of people mm -hmm. that we're going to be here. And I'm going to tell you some really deep things about me. And that could be either sexual trauma, that could be child abuse, yeah. that could be neglect, that could be domestic violence. And I need to cry through this situation. Now, is a four or five hour healing circle going to necessarily fix all your trauma? Yeah. No, it's not. But... It allows you the space that it is not a traditional space. It's not a therapist's office, mm -hmm. right? It's other women who look exactly like you who have made this pact that you're going to go through this struggle together. And it's a, I'm guessing it's a, an, an area where you feel trust in the people that you're speaking with or you feel so comfortable that you're able to share the trauma that you yeah. went through or... You know anything else any other burden or anything like that going on in your life right right, right. and then from there you have a healing circle later so i know where you were going in terms of like like what do you what you know with psychopharmacology right so like in these healing circles i noticed like they would give us like orange juice and like onion soup and i'm like why are they giving us these things you know because it seemed like it was always the same concoction and yeah. i was like well is this like a grandmother's like herbs or whatever and so a lot of people would say oh no but because the natural components of a lot of these like Depression medication happen to be in a lot of natural lot ingredients. Of natural it remedies. could be like because you don't have enough vitamin C or because, you know, something about onion soup and there's yeah. a chemical that actually makes us feel good. And, and so I, I told you that's like yeah. there's recent studies about the, you know, what natural ingredients can we use in our bodies to actually make us feel better who have an impact on our brain, right. which kind of like regulates our serotonin levels and dopamine levels, mm -hmm. which is directly linked to mental illness. That's, wow. That's pretty powerful. That's very, very powerful. And then in terms of mental illness, I know that you work with a lot of adolescents. What changes or what's the difference have you seen in young people pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and post-pandemic in terms of their mental health? Because there is a lot where people say, oh, kids were not in school, so they were not socialized, and all of these things are, you know, fairly true. Kids weren't socialized during the pandemic. You kept them home, and they were guarded, and now you have to let them back out into the world post-pandemic, and you're saying, here, go free without any skills that you may have learned while you were in school. Is there a huge difference in the, the kids that you see or the issues that they're facing? So, how PC are we on this show, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think when the kids came back in the fall of 2021, I, because some 
schools were still hybrid. They still had right. hybrid models, yes. right? Some of the kids came back and it was like certified another planet. I don't know what that was. Wow. But, well, think about it, right? And we'll take it through different um, ages. Children during the pandemic who were of kindergarten age at four years old, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't necessarily go to daycare. Right. I, let me, I appreciate daycare so much more now. Because I was like, what do kids learn in daycare? Oh, I know what they do. They learn how to sit down and respect adults sometimes and sometimes learn their colors, but they also know not to hit their friends. Mm -hmm. We underestimate the power of like a lot of like these child uh, social welfare programs that we have yeah. that really teach uh, our children a lot of skills. So they came from a house to pre-K yeah. where biting... Right? You have this mm. oral fixation, right? Of course, yeah. this is what I want. This is what I need. And you, have, you have kids that are biters. You have kids that don't necessarily are, are potty trains, right? Um, you have kids who don't necessarily have the same speech and language skills. Mm -hmm. You have kids who don't know how to share. You have kids who have a lot of like separation anxiety. Why? You were with your parents for 24. Know, for yeah, 20, for most of for that. 12 months, right? Mm -hmm. um, or 24 months or prior, right, depending on the age. So then you come back here and you have a whole other, you know, learning to, to do. Yeah. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that now. And then for our adolescent students, you have children who now the only source of communication was the phone, right? Yes. Internet. Yep. Right. So then you have increased incidence of cyberbullying now that you're together. That's or you have right. kids who have now created this alternative universe, universe, whether it's in Roblox or Second Life or, I don't know, Fortnite. Or you name it, right? Because yeah. you can have, like... Full-on you know, other... Conversations. Yep. You're building and, communities with people you've never met. And, <laughs> and the breakups are real. <laughs> this is another show. But, like, yeah. in terms of, like, virtual... Like relationships or these are, mm -hmm. are, are real. The, 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 the you know the rules or engagement are the same, but like the, a lot of the kids, you know, you came back into school, but they were still attached to this other world. Yeah. So there was a lot. There's a lot of unlearning to do and a lot of learning, and let alone the academic gaps. Right. We're talking about just social. Like yeah. really, school is a way for you to learn social emotional tools. We have to address that first before we can even get to academia. So. Um, I work with educators. I know that they're struggling. Yeah. But, you know, I have a first graders, first and second graders who don't even know how to hold a pencil. My first and oh, second wow. graders, though, they weren't in school in pre-K and kindergarten. Mm. So you always have to think about that. Yeah. When you see a second grader, where, at what age did the pandemic affect them? And that's what they missed out on. That's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. And that is very sad for children that have to go through that like they didn't go through the normal steps that they had to to gain the functionality that they needed in order to pursue their continue their academic career yeah that's that's wow that's very intense i can't wait to see the research on this like in a couple of years you're very excited about yeah. it i mean i'm excited on, about the topic not <laughs> about kids and what they went through during the pandemic okay. but post pandemic i'm happy that you're one of the people that they're seeing in order to kind of wade through that quicksand or the quicksand that they're feeling at that moment. Thank you so much, Vivian. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thank for sharing. You. You're welcome. Now, okay. in terms of your private practice, what do you want people to know? Like, why should I come to you and have you be my therapist? Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that question. <laughs> well, the first thing that I would say is that um, whether it's me or any practice, right, it takes a lot of courage to admit that you need to talk to someone. Yes. And I think that's the first step. And you will make a lot of first appointments before you actually go to your first appointment. Because mm -hmm. you won't show up. Yeah. Because yeah. it takes a lot of courage and then being very vulnerable to say, hi, I'm in the space where I need to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And whether it's me or someone else, um, therapy is a lot like dating. There has to be Carl Rogers, um, you know, psychologist, always spoke about what's the most important thing in a therapeutic relationship, and it's called therapeutic alliance, right? And therapeutic alliance means how do you get along, right? Yeah. With, with that therapist. So 
You need that mm-hmm. chemistry. Yes. And you're not going to have that chemistry with every therapist. So if if you come to my practice and you feel like I am not giving you what you need, right, then a good therapist will evaluate, right, will ask you for feedback, and then will refer you to other places. But I think it's for you to feel safe, for you to feel listened to, yes. and for, order for, for, for you to also feel like, you know, there's some type of learning that's happening or some type of transformation or evolution. Now, does that happen immediately? Yeah. No. But I will tell you, most people feel really good after the first and second session. Okay. Right? And then they don't come back, and then the depression comes back. Right? Oh. And so, because then you unloaded it. Right. right. And it's it's not a one or two. It's continuous. Process, right? it's, yeah, it's continuous. It's continuous. It's continuous for you to talk about everything and just kind of let it out. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, Vivian, I thank you so much for coming on my show today. That was a wealth of information. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get more information from Ms. Vivian Colon, trekwithin.org, T-R-E-K-W-I-T-H-I-N.org is where you can find her website, find all of the information that she has to offer you, and I hope that you guys choose her as your therapist. Thank you so thank much you. for being here, Vivian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So next, I would like to introduce ANS, All Natural Substance. He is an adult contemporary hip-hop artist, songwriter, crypto coach, and a producer at IRAMP Networks. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I am feeling great, feeling good. I'm just going to dive right into the music aspect of it. An adult contemporary hip-hop artist, can you break that down? How is it a little bit different from the artists of today? Well, that title is expressing pretty much the mature side of an artist and the diversity of them, not just mainly for the streets and due to my, you know, generation Mm -hmm. being an 80s baby, you know, age dropping a little bit. But, you know, that's what it rounds up to be. Okay, okay. And then ANS. Where did that evolve from? Well, A and S, good question. You got all these good questions today. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. We got we got to work together here. We got to work together. <laughs> so A and S, um, yeah, it's my name. It's an acronym for my name, but um, it's pretty much during the journey and phases of me being uh, a man and mm-hmm. an artist. So it started from another. Ninja struggling. Yes. To all necessary skills, to ain't nothing sweet, all right. natural substance, add and subtract, you know, aim and shoot. It's so many different qualities to me. Right. So yes. that expresses all the differences with it. Okay. Yeah. And you're a songwriter. How do you write your songs? Do you have to be in a certain headspace? How do you like to be creative? Good question. I like to be creative in so many type of ways. My creativity extends from life. Okay. All over. I could walk out this door and see somebody do something that'll inspire me to create a song Mm -hmm. or something I may have learned years ago or, you know, just stuff that inspires me, but... Sometimes it's the music that I receive, yes. or sometimes it's just my ideas. Um, you know, they come in many shapes and forms, and I made that into a nice piece of work for you to dance to and okay. get inspired from and be like, you know what, he's pretty darn good, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to listen to a few tracks in a little bit, mm-hmm. but where would you like to see your music grow to or go? Good question. I would love to see my music in some films, some mm-hmm. television shows, uh, maybe your favorite video game you're playing. Okay. You know, um, it just appears wherever music is capable of being enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're going on that road trip and you want that good energy, pop my joint in. You know, you want to enjoy the moment at, at a nice gathering, yes. you could put me on, you know? I'm not trying to kill you like that. We're not cursing like that. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. But it's still some heartfelt joints on there. Okay, perfect. That sounds good. Make this beat. Yeah, a 
Bayonets Featured on my man Small's record Straight Killing It Check me out Stay tuned Yo Microphone check, one, two, one, two People see you on the stage, but what you gonna do, huh? Difference was me, they thought it was you Coming through with something new Nowadays anybody is a trapper, rapper, clapper with a crew But I had no clue You don't want the shot, but quit the shoot it's obvious how paranoia are you Came a long way from sitting on stoops Near a case in the truth Skyscraper fly high at the party on roost Making sure my credit right In and out the booth Poof, I appear Oops, they not aware Deuce mean a pair Walk with me A double entendre Got you lost here Hit rewind, find a jewel air Stepping it up While y'all stuck in the stairs Just because you drove past That don't mean you getting here A shortinary guest list Rollie on the wrist, don't tick, got him pissed. Huh? My energy, enemy, I admit. Call that God sent. Bounce through these houses. Was it killing it? Killing it? Yes, killing it. What is killing it about? Good question. Killing it is about uh, a record that I was featured on, my boy Smalls mm -hmm. from my community in Far Rockaway. He's an artist and. We grew up with each other, yeah. and he had the track. Uh, he said, yo, you know, we never did something. I don't mind, you know. So he emailed me the beat. Uh, I came to the studio session, mm -hmm. wrote the verse, recorded it, and we all killed it, Perfect. you know? And that's how that came about. Okay. Yes. All right. So how long have you been performing? I've been performing over decades. Mm-hmm. So I've performed at so many places. Uh, I did one of my close friend weddings. That was a great experience. Shout mm -hmm. out to Brother C that I know. He allowed me to have the opportunity to perform at his wedding. Also, yeah. I performed at Mr. M's wedding as well. So I've done some weddings. I've uh -huh. done some, you know, prestigious industry events as well. Yes. Uh, some talent shows on a come up. So yeah, that's a uh, feature. Now we're going to ride out into passion. It's for the ladies. Hit me out. Girl, I got that passion that'll take you away. That'll take you away. Girl, I got that passion that make you move it this way. That make you move it this way. Girl, I got that passion. Got that flavor you crave See that love dripping all on my leg Girl, I got that passion Got that flavor you crave When I'm leaving, you beg me to stay I'm a captivated by this collaboration No cap, love how that fatty shaking Call that aspiration She put the moon on me You know the sun straight elevating Let's a sexy self got me out my meditation. Guess I was a concentration. Uh, without no contemplating, we be on it, vacating. We got characters for roles we playing. She be Cardi, Nikki, and Megan. I be Joy and I be me. Third leg game, hanging SSC session. Going re re, recharging relief. If you good, going back to sleep. Wake you up, back on me. Serotonin, melatonin, we the one, two Creating the threes, artists priceless to me Record Rockaway Chief Put that fire out on music, keep your ear to the streets Between the knowledge and she, she love it when I go deep Mmm, that's me Girl, I got that passion Got that flavor you rain Gotta take you away Girl, I got that passion It's passion Passion came from killing it. So, killing it was uh, a hit. Um, it got the attention of Small's manager. Okay. And his manager um, took a liking to me. So, he sent me a beat, which was Passion. Uh -huh. The beat was called Passion. And, I, and it's from Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, shout outs to DJ Skip Entertainment. And I took the song, you know, the, the beat home. I said, you know, I could write a song called Passion. So the beat was Passion. The song is Passion with my passion. All right. Where would you like to perform in the future? Like, where? what would be the, oh, this is what 
my dream is. Madison Square Garden, Barclay Center, uh, mm-hmm. opening up on tour for one of my favorite artists, you know? Who is? So many. <laughs> to get Give me top three. Top three. Gosh, <laughs> coming on. I like okay, to put uh, people on the spot. Okay, Top right three, now. Right now. Right now. First three that comes to your head. Okay, it's an indie artist, Mr. Esquire. Mm-hmm. That's one. Two, Golden Era Nas. Okay, okay. Three. I don't know who's going to fit number three. It's a female. Uh, you know, it's too many. I know a lot of good <laughs> indie artists. You know, I don't want to. That's not the real top three. That's just the random. That's just top a random because I, right. I put you on the spot. <laughs> right, not, right, right, you know, right. sometimes you got to put people on the spot. See how quickly you come up with mm-hmm. these answers. B I T T. Yes. Billions into trillions. Mm-hmm. Are we talking dollars? Like, what are we talking? Listen, we talking dollars. We talking positive energy. Mm-hmm. We talking common sense. All the little. Bits that could turn into a trillion yeah. is what it represents. But it stems from my enthusiasm over cryptocurrency. I was just about to say, that's how it plays into that crypto coach. Right. All right. right, right. Okay. Now we're going to jump in to Bitcoin. B-I-T, billions into them trillions. Produced by Detailer. Far Rock's finest. Uh huh. Billions into them trillions. Billions into them trillions. I'm a product of a profit that get produced in millions. Billions into them trillions. Billions into them trillions. I'm a product of a profit that get produced in millions. Uh, off a little bit, the market shift. Off a little bit, the market shift. Living in truth, that's what I call it. Living in truth, that's what I call it. Billions into them trillions. Billions into them trillions. I'm a product of a profit that get produced in millions. Dropping some jewels out the treasure chest. The voice you hear is A and S. Here at work trying to settle my debts. Doing long hours, deposit more checks. Making something out of nothing for my culture. Be my custom, a lot of power, meaning in the numbers. I'ma start my own business, be the funder. I'm out of sight when I underwrite. Socially, society got us to dependency. We need financial literacy. Haru and Ali got a remedy. That's what my mind sense. Call that my mind sense. Cause out my mind, I'ma make some sense. I'm a product of that profit coming with these projects. So what? I was raised out the projects, but I'm not with that nonsense. For the most powerful cognizant, watch me make moves with y'all logic. The vision is sound, got y'all hypnotizing. Off a little bit, now you're copying. You keep falling short and I'm high as shh. Instead of being on top of cliffs, they want us dead up in the pit. Quick flips of the chips. Gamblers hoping that they strike rich. Every hood when they catch a lick, 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 and a punk ass cop wanna charge it. Fat bad full of dope target. Do anything for the paper haulers. There's never enough regardless. A disruption with economics. Needs to split some of the markets. The vibrant trap is creating a problem. V with the zip with the cockroach. Gotta clip my coins looking for parking. Billions into them trillions, I'm a product of a profit that get produced in millions. Billions into them trillions, billions into them trillions, I'm a product of a profit that get produced in millions. Uh, off a little bit, the market shift. Off a little bit, the market shift. Living in truth, that's what I call it. Living in truth, that's what I call it. Billions into them trillions, billions into them trillions, I'm a product of a profit that get produced in millions. You know my style straight indigenous, my penmanship, a manuscript. Right for the points is Make my point. Lay this down and blow this joint. Hop stops from the bottom to the tip top. It's grid lot when you pull up on money blocks. Everybody trying to find a spot. Plenty of space in the lot. You can rock. If you park with me, I'ma get you alive. Great job, man. Great job. Those were three pretty passionate songs. Now tell everyone, where can they listen to your music? Where can they follow you? Hit you up on social media. <laughs> could find me on Instagram at Good God A N S. Okay. The music. Um, that was something real exclusive just now. It's not even on no platform, but it's coming soon. Oh, so you're trying to say I'm special? Yeah, you're pretty special. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. all right, I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, 
So you new all. music coming soon to everyone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. ANS, I thank you so much for being on my show today. That was definitely a treat, and we can't hear, wait to hear more from you. Oh, thank you. I won't be a stranger. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. All right. <laughs>